Our subject today is stereolithography. This is brought to you by the CAD Academy. I am Stephanie Kwame and it's my pleasure to be your host today. What is stereolithography and why do you care? In 1986, a gentleman named Chuck Hall founded a company called 3D Systems and came up with an amazing idea. And because it was so great, he did a patent on it, which means that nobody else can take and steal that idea mostly. In this day and age, you just never know. But it was U.S. patent 4,575,330. And it was entitled Apparatus for Production of Three-Dimensional Objects by Stereolithography. Wow, that's quite a word, isn't it? The little part over on the right bottom here, that is a part that's done using stereolithography a printer. I like to think that he got that word from instead of stereo which means coming from more than one speaker I like to think that he got it from Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory. At one point we decided to study the Sun and we wanted to take 3D pictures of the Sun so we sent up two identical spacecrafts and they were launched into orbits and one went slower than the other so that we could actually get uh, different perspective views but what it was is we got images of the Sun then in 3D. Lithography means to print and or to write or use a stone to print and write and it's a method for printing so basically I think this is where he got the name of stereolithography it's a 3D object that we can print. This opened the door for something called rapid or quick prototyping. In the past when someone came up with an idea for a new mechanical part he would have to take a lengthy time of making drawings of it he'd send it off to a manufacturer and it was very costly to make just one object of them <clears throat> so it took a long time and it was costly but uh, with the stereolithography printers what we do is we take a, or create a designer idea in our CAD software and then we just print using a special file called an STL file and that's a stereolithography file out to our 3D printer oh. and you can see that uh, prototyping or the making of prototypes is uh, a busy field motor vehicles uh, are the biggest uh, use uh, prototyping the very most and then come consumer products and then uh, medical devices and so on it's interesting business machines and medical devices <clears throat> it's interesting I found ran into an application with one of my customers uh, um, that was a telephone company and they do these huge spools that are about eight feet tall and they have uh, thick cables in them with lots of lines in them and it rolls up on that and they just unroll them as they do uh, the telephone lines well the machines break down sometimes and those are older machines so they actually retrofit the parts so that they can make a part to uh, fix the machines because they can't buy parts for them anymore so there's com that's another use for them as well there's a, a, a lot of uses for um, prototypes and these little uh, small models but basically you send that over to the printer and the printers these are examples of the printers down here and they have a certain size you can see by the bay that they have um, an enclosure in there so you're limited by that but it uh, takes thin uh, layers of polymer uh, materials and it might take hours or even days to actually make the prototype but it's still much quicker than it was uh, before and this is an example of a part made <clears throat> using an STL file and you can see that you've got uh, the, uh, the uh, it's like a nozzle or something but it's an actual working part so they make you can make bearings inside of something it's just so completely incredible but what this did is it dramatically changed the time to market for the product so that things can come to market faster so new ideas were uh, became realizations much faster and it's interesting that now manufacturing is taking it up and the next frontier is called rapid manufacturing so we'll have to wait and see what happens with that now say you came up with a great idea 
and you were using SolidWorks. And this is the wheel project that <coughs> goes along with this unit. Uh, you'll actually make this wheel project, and I think it's absolutely a, a wonderful and a fun project to make. Matter of fact, I bet you can hardly wait. But anyway, if I came up with a great idea and I wanted to send that out, it's also you can keep it secret for a long time too because no one will see this but you. But basically they take that printer and that printer is hooked up to your network just like any other printer. And then I go file and I can actually in uh, SolidWorks print 3D. But if I wanted to, I could also save it. And you save as and I can save that also as an STL file and that STL is the stereolithography uh, file format that it understands. So if I save this, let's go ahead and save that right now. And you see what it does is it turns it into uh, tessellation lines or little lines and so it basically would be uh, recreating that with those little tessellation lines. But it'll be, it's accurate and it's accurate up to the accuracy that you that your file is. And of course you have to be aware of the size of the chamber when you uh, make your parts so that that will fit in that chamber. Most of the time you can do a lot of mechanical parts one to one. So I went over to Archicad and if you're a CAD Academy customer you may have Archicad as well and uh, we are doing a retreat model. So if you wanted to save this in a 3D format you'd go to a perspective view. If you want to save it in 2D you would be in a like this view here. But we want a 3D view to do an, uh, to do a model using stereolithography is my uh, goal here. And so I went to file and under file, whoops I got a little box starting there. File if I go to save as you can see that there are file formats, a lot of different ones you can save, but the only ones that I could see that would be helpful would be a DXF or a DWG. And uh, so I could take that file format <coughs> over to my CAD, and so this is it in my, two, my CAD uh, package, and then from here I could do an STL out. There's also free file uh, formats that you can uh, purchase, or not purchase, you can get for free, but you can download from the web that will do DWG to uh, STL. So DWG is this CAD format to uh, stereolithography. If you haven't seen one of these machines, it's very likely that your educational reseller sells them. I would be happy to bring one in, but it's very, very exciting to see an architectural model uh, done with uh, stereolithography. It, it's really changing the way we do a lot of things and uh, it really even affects architecture or to have you create something or design something and actually then hold it in your hand and uh, see how it would work. But uh, stereolithography is not only awesome, it's very cool. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to print something sometime during your uh, tenure in school. Thanks for listening.